fortune awaits in Blood and Plunder. Set sail in the golden age of piracy and claim the riches of the Caribbean at beastsofwar.com. Greek mythology rages to life in mythic battles pantheon. Become a god and command heroes and monsters in a battle for Olympus at beastsofwar.com. Hey guys, this is Az with Beasts of War and you're about to join me with Alex and Jamie as we're going to go through an unboxing of Dark Souls the board game. I am super excited for this one. I know you guys can't really feel it at home but hopefully you can see this thing is heavy. <laughs> there is so many miniatures, so many cards, bunch of fun in here. Tons in there. Yeah, there's <laughs> about three kilos worth of board game right there. Yeah. God. So let's just get it down and start getting this open. Now, bring it down. I want to show you guys something straight away as this lid comes off, because this has a real treat, right, as we get open here. This is what you're going to see as you open the Dark Souls board game. Could you have it any other way? It's, <laughs> it's just perfect. It absolutely tells you exactly what to expect um, going into this. So I'll go ahead and get this out of the way. Now, we actually have the little insert here, which just goes into the top, and it has, if you want to hand that up to me there, Jimmy, yeah, yeah. all the cards you're going to need for this game. And when I say all the cards, we literally mean all the cards. There's a lot of different things in here. So, so what different types of cards are we going to see in the box, Alex? So you've got, obviously, equipment cards, the ones that everyone wants to see. You have the behavior cards for all of the bosses, because yep. they are driven kind of by an AI, almost. Sure. So we need something to display that information. That's all on cards that are in there. The same cards for all of the smaller enemies that you fight while you're going through your exploration. We also need the cards to tell you what you're fighting against yep. while you're exploring. So we've got encounter cards in there. And I think that's all of them. Granted, wow. there are about six different types <laughs> of <laughs> treasure cards in there. So just to give you guys at home an idea. So this is this is the Dragon Tooth card. So this one actually has a lot of different options on it. And it's going to on the card, it's going to tell you basically everything it can do from its range in the top left there yep. to the stats you require on your character to actually be able to use yep. the card. And then do you want to talk a little bit about what the bottom box represents? Yeah, no problem at all. So this is a legendary treasure card. Wow. As is denoted Good first pick. <laughs> by the icon opposite the range. Okay. Yeah, just up here. It's a two-handed weapon, which is the two hands grabbing the weapon yep, just that. underneath it. And then moving down to your options. The number in the square bracket, so the four, the six, and the zero, mm -hmm. they are your stamina costs. Okay. So the stamina is the resource you use when you're making your actions in the game. Um, and then next to those are the dice you would get. So for, you'd pay four stamina, mm -hmm. you'd mark that on your endurance bar, yep. and then you would get one blue dice and two orange dice, okay. and you would roll those against the flat armor of the, the boss or sure. enemy you're facing. Um, and basically, it's it's all about that risk management when you go into an encounter. Mm -hmm. Every character has 10 stamina or health. Okay. So that one bar it is used for both. When so you as, spend you, yeah, stamina, as you start to take damage, your stamina is going to come up to meet it, essentially. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's almost like the ceiling falling in on you yes. to take damage. <laughs> so your stamina goes from left to right yeah. on your bar. And then when you take damage, it goes right to left. Okay. When they meet. That is when you die. Right. So say you were using the Dragon Tooth and you went for a six stamina attack, say against a boss, you now have four boxes left to take damage, assuming you haven't already taken damage. So it's all about that <laughs> risk management of yeah. when you do and don't want to go all in. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Just so as you're chatting, I'll just I'll grab another one here. Yeah. Something a, a little bit more straightforward. That's another legendary. Oh, here we go. So this is something maybe more akin with a kind of starting weapon or something a bit early on in the game. Yeah. So that's a, a great wooden hammer. That is from the Warriors class specific treasure okay. card. So what that means is that he brings, when you play a warrior, those cards will be in the deck. Yeah. It's not only that he can use it. Anyone that meets the stat requirements can use it, but it's in that deck because he's playing. So if you didn't have a warrior in your game, sure. say you're doing a two-player game and no one was playing the warrior, that wouldn't be in there. Yeah, so you're not watering down your deck with cards that are not really tailored for the kind of yep. class you're playing, yep. basically. Um, so Jim has just handed me, I'll show you guys again, this is going to be a defensive weapon then. So this is then an earth, uh, Eastern Iron Shield, sorry. And then I can talk through what those four at the bottom are. Gotcha. So at the bottom, the blue dice that you can see there represents the block okay. granted. Yeah, yeah, Next that. to that, you've got the resist, which okay. is the defense you use against magic. Right. Next to that, you've got the dodge. So that's how many dodge dice you'd gain. Okay. And then finally, at the end, you've got the upgrade slots. Fantastic. So, so in this instance, so this is more tailored to... So you've got a decent defense and a decent dodge, but it's not going to help against magical attacks at all. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
And um, so like that's where really tailoring your well, I suppose when the look you get is it individual to characters, or are you going to share it between you? Do you decide so how it goes? It all goes into an inventory, and then you need to discuss and decide what's best for each character. And right. very often you will find that there is one piece of loot that comes up that you kind of you specifically want, mm -hmm. and then you start to kind of tailor your build around that one piece of equipment. Right. Um, in terms of your leveling up and how that works, it's a nice simple system okay. where you have like tier levels, yeah. and then those levels just govern what equipment you can and can't use. Yeah. Um, and each each character has four tiers. So it's your base, yeah. and then three tiers of oh, upgrades. Okay, awesome. Okay. Well, I think probably the next thing we really do is get into the rest of the cards. But what we're going to do is open up some more of the box so you guys can see what else is in here, and then we can marry them up and show what that means on the cards. Yeah. So yeah, sure. we'll grab this. One. So that's the, that's the <laughs> just a nice little box. Just a, <laughs> a nice little box inside another really little box. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 pretty chunky. So let's see how am I opening? So it goes from the side. This is the big boss box. This oh, so we'll not maybe look at them immediately. We'll pull them right out. Give, give a little tease. Oh my word! Look at oh Size those my matches. goodness! Oh, they goodness. are they're massive. They're mini bosses. Um, yeah. Mini bosses? Yes, Four of them are. Yeah, uh, these are mini and main bosses, aren't they? And so there, is, there are two two main bosses. So we'll, we'll, we'll come back to those. We'll tease them for a One second. One of them is is half okay. a main boss. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, so let's so let's start with the kind of everyday what yep. you expect to come across in an encounter, guys. And if okay. I slide this out. Thank you so much. Oh, here we go. So we're gonna get two trays. Of if I take that one away, wow! Look at this. Okay, so let me get these out of the way, and we'll start to have a look. So we'll start maybe with the heroes. Yeah. And say with and is it heroes the right term? Uh, characters. characters. Player characters. Okay. So I'll get these out, and then you can kind of walk me through. Wow, my goodness! So we'll start with who's this? So is that the warrior. Is the warrior. Okay. Um, so his focus in his starting equipment is basically area damage. Okay. So he's not necessarily the highest damage deal. He's one of the higher. He's quite across the board defensively with his starting equipment. Okay. He's got a bit of block, a bit of resist, and a bit of dodge. Um, and then he can do some area damage with his attacks. So if you can sort of corral a group of enemies up, he can hopefully go in and take them all out with one sure. hit. Be nice and efficient with your stamina, which yeah. is kind of what it's all about. Yeah, no, he he looks awesome actually. I must admit, I do like that model. It's the like wielding that sort of. It almost looks like a double-handed battle battle axe with but with one hand and the shield. Just that tough. Yeah, he yep. just has that, that. That I think that as you said, the cleaving attack nature. You can get that coming off the model. Yeah. And um, so let's see who we've got. Who's this then? That is the assassin, Jamie's favorite. Oh, my favorite. Ah. <laughs> my favorite character um, and probably model as well. So the, this guy. Look the, at that weapon. The assassin, he focuses more on dodge than anything else and defensively. That's like with his starting equipment he's based in. These are explanations I'm giving is just the equipment and the stats they have sure. to start with. You can kind of customize them as you like yep. as you're going through the game. Um, and then he's very based on sort of spiky damage. Mm -hmm. So he's got native minuses on his equipment, but he's rolling more dice than the other player characters. Okay. So if you get a good roll, he can do huge amounts of damage, yeah. yep. but he do, you do have to go into it accepting that you're looking at spikes, and that might spike up, it might spike yeah. down. He's a little little all or nothing He kind of. He either just yeah. insta kills the boss or so kind of... For, for my sort of description of him, he's he's absolutely fine in the game until that one time that he's not, and then the party dies. <laughs> yeah. like he's, he's brilliant until he's not. It's kind of assassins, though, aren't they? They're not yeah. the most yeah. reliable, but they, they when they when they shine, they really shine. Yeah. Um, so when we go to the next guy, let's have a look at him. So this is my favourite. This is the Herald. Oh. Um, he is kind of the more supportive class, but you can be super greedy with it. Okay. And I like that he can put out a lot of damage, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of, in terms of how the activations work, and we can kind of talk through that when we get onto the player board, so you've got a more visual idea of what I'm talking about. But the Herald is very good in terms of swapping equipment out and kind of almost min-maxing that stamina and being able to yeah. go, I'm going to do this heavy attack, but then I'm going to give myself some stamina back so I can do this other thing, and then I'm going to give you some stamina back. Oh, nice. And he can have yeah. like really flashy activations that make you feel really cool. So yeah. is he? So he's kind of supportive. He can actually kind of bolster the other characters that he's playing with? Okay. Yeah. That's really awesome, actually, because I, I think I would probably go down that route. I, yeah. I, I struggle between the tank and the healer in, the, in kind of the traditional RPG yeah, sense, yeah. so yep. I think, yeah, he sounds really interesting, and I like seeing... So like in three characters, so much versatility already, yeah, yeah. but still, still keeping the kind of troops you maybe expect, but actually being very unique to a Dark Souls setting, which yeah. is awesome. So we've got a fourth. Then this is the final one. Brave Sir Knight. 
<laughs> okay. He is your traditional tank. Yeah. Okay. Um, he can his stat distribution is relatively similar to the warrior, not exactly mm -hmm. the same. So in terms of the builds, you often see them look quite similar. Though I have done a few dodge builds with the knight, just because yeah. why, why not? not? <laughs> yeah. um, it's good to test and try and just yeah, see what just works. See what happens. I mean, everyone glancing across the table at you, going, "I'm going to dodge that," and they're like, "You're the knight. You're the good at blocking <laughs> yeah. guy." And you're like, "Oh, I know, but." So it turns out my doing. equipment says yeah. I'm good at dodging now. And as we've seen, we can have a shield with some block, but also an element of dodge to it. So yeah. depending on whether you're using a large sort of full body shield or yeah. just like a buckler. So yeah, that, yeah I, I like that. But then I have also done builds where I've just given him two two kite shields, no weapons. <laughs> he just shield. stands in the middle of the room, just tanking, tanking everything. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's and you can do that. Yep. Like, yeah, yeah. And would you be able to then swap weapons mid fight or if so you decided? So the you've got in terms of your your slots and where your equipment goes. You've got an armor slot, which mm -hmm. is just for your armor. So yeah. we've got armor is just one card for a whole set okay, rather than yeah. separated out into a helmet, legs, gloves. Gotcha. Um, and then going on to the weapons, you've got a left and a right hand. Mm -hmm. So if it's one piece, one handed piece of equipment, then you could have any two of those. So you could have one spell and one standard weapon. Yeah. You could have two shields. You could have one shield and a sword. Wow. You could have one two hander. And then you have an offhand slot. Okay. So you could have a one handed sword and then two shields. And then you go into an encounter with your mm -hmm. shields equipped. And then when it gets to your activation, at the start of your activation, mm -hmm. you could go, right, I want to kill that guy. I'm going to swap out one of my shields for my sword. Yeah. Shields <laughs> for my sword. Yeah. But you will lose whatever stats sure. were on that shield. Yeah. So you need to kind of decide, look at the, the sort of state of the tile and yeah. be like, well, if I move in and try and kill him, I'm going to end my activation with those three guys coming to hit me. Yeah. Would it, is it better to kill that one guy, or am I better off? Just tanking all mm -hmm. of them with, say, yeah. two shields equipped. And after every player activation, the sort of the, the, the monsters, monsters, the undead, the hollows are going to activate. Yes. So yes. you have to have that level of forward thinking. Thinking there's going to be a couple of turns before it gets back round to me. If I'm taking the shield off, I'm potentially leaving myself really open. Yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, that that's cool. So you've got Jamie. You've got some of the hollow. I've, some I've, of the. Oh, it's hidden behind the box. There. I've arrayed oh. all the models out. Oh. Yeah. That, well, I'm going to say you strategically blind dated yeah, yeah. that there and just slid the door away. Yeah. So let's get some of those. And do you have the cards that go with some of them? Uh, yes. Yeah. I've got them all here. Awesome. So the first one you've picked up there is the hollow soldier. And there's yeah. his uh, behavior card. So this is what you're going to get when you have a hollow soldier. And so you get three of these guys in the yeah, core set. So we're just things. kind of. So these these guys, do they? I assume these guys kind of come in twos and threes often, or do they often kind of come in their own? So room? they're kind of pack hunters, if you like. <laughs> they are sort of your most basic of the melee guys you're going to fight against. Yeah. They have quite a simple behaviour, um, but they kind of have a tendency to swarm. Okay. We've got a lot of different mechanics in the game, like pushes and things along those lines. Sure. These guys don't have them. Right, okay. So we'll have a little look at their card and just see it's quite a straightforward one. So oh, starting with their name and their health, I assume, at the top. So that's yeah. yep, that's the name and then just the one health. And then yeah. next to that on the left, you've got the five. Yeah. Which is their threat level. Okay. And that is what determines the order in which they activate because they're not controlled by a DM or anything yeah. like that. The higher that number is the earlier in their activation okay. they go. Gotcha. Um, going down to the zero, you can see on the left-hand side, that's the range of their attack. Okay. So they have to be standing on the same node, and we'll get onto nodes when we Absolutely. look at some tiles. Um, next to that, you've got their block and resist. So okay, they so work very similarly here. Very yeah, yeah. similarly to the player characters, apart from their static numbers rather than dice. Okay. So that was a, always be a one, so you'd always minus your result on a dice by gotcha. one. Anything over that would be done as damage. Yeah, so there's no there's no essentially um, like block rule to be made for the monsters. There's nope, no, no like attack rule to be made for these guys. They kind of have a base attack value and a base defense value. So you know what you're yeah. going against. Yep. Kind of takes a little bit of that randomness out of it. And yeah. Actually, yeah, so that, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then going across, that is the dodge value next to that to the here. right. Yeah. So that is the number of successes you need on your dodge dice. Right, okay. So you add up your, with the defensive stats, you add them up across all of your cards. Okay. And say I have three dodge dice, I roll all three of those every time I make a dodge. Right, But okay. the amount of successes I need is determined by the card. If I succeed, yeah. I take no damage. If I fail, I take it all. Okay, yeah. so, if you, so if you have a dodge on your shield, a dodge in your weapon, a dodge in your armor, that's going to give you three dodge dice, and you're yep, just yep. looking in that case, 
for a single success. Yes. Yep. Okay, yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. So it means that, you know, you kind of have, so the if you've got a dodge build assassin, yep. you'd look at those and be like, oh, I'm not too scared. Yeah. Then you could have a guy who maybe has only a three damage attack, mm -hmm. but it could have a dodge value of four. Yeah. So for everyone that's blocking, they don't care about that guy. Yeah. But the assassin's really scared of that guy. What yeah. I'm going to do, just while we're chatting about it, is bring in the dodge dice. So any mathematicians out there can have a quick a quick look. Yeah. So the dodge dice is this little green one here, and it's 50 50? Just a straight 50 50. Yeah, three, three successes. Three blank, three successes. Three failures. Um, so three of those against, you're only needing a single success against a hollow soldier. Not bad odds. Yeah. No, you them. should be pretty safe. Uh, so that leaves us then with these two sort of symbols and icons at the bottom. Yeah. Okay. So the symbol of the D-pad shows okay. his movement. Sure. And then the icon attached to that is who he targets. And right. that means it's the nearest. Okay, cool. So he would go for the nearest model and he'd just move one towards the nearest model. Yeah. Um, and then there are various tie breaks in there if you've gotcha. got two people standing equidistant. And then you go over to his attack symbol, yeah. which is a physical attack. A magic attack is a slightly different sure. symbol, and that would also attack the nearest guy. And awesome. So his is just like a super simple pattern where he just moves in, hit okay. with sword. What you expect yeah. from a from a sword. So I'll not focus too much on the rest of the cards for the guys. We'll just get yep. the minis in here to show the guys yep. at home. Obviously, what you're going to see. So what are you handing me? So now? these are the crossbow hollows. Ah, and these guys are a bit of a pain to yeah. deal with. So these at are the start, they are high in target priority. Um, just to give a quick overview of what they do, they essentially move away from whoever holds the aggro token, okay. and then they will shoot them for magic damage. Wow, okay. And magic damage is kind of scary at the yeah. start. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah, so anything that's not physical is going to go against your resistance, and I assume you're not really starting with a lot of magical yeah, armor. So your yeah. starting gear tends to be like just one black dice for your magic resistance. So gotcha. you, you tend to take two or maybe even three damage quite regularly from them. Wow. So high priority targets yep. for future games if we uh, if we start getting into them. But obviously they often tend to be hiding on the other side of the table because they ah. move away rather than towards. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So keep coming. What have we got next? Next up, we got the final ones of the hollows. They got the. Uh, large hollow. These, large hollow. I mean, size. I know these are, as models go, I mean, relatively large. The base size, and look at those. I mean, let's get a quick comparison. So I'll bring back in just our... Brave Sir Knight. Brave Sir Knight. The bravest of knights taken you know, on two. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's that's already quite a large model compared to just one of the standard characters. Yeah. Um, and yes, they are very nice sculpts. Lovely detail on them, actually, for, you know, essentially what are just... You know, hollow rag and bone guys. You know, yeah, they, they but look... these are still quite basic. Yeah, quite basic enemies. So let's yeah. get these. Out. What they do is move in, shove you around, and do mm -hmm. damage with their pushes rather than like a, an actual attack yeah. symbol. They just shove you around and do damage with the shoves. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Uh, uh, next up, we have the Silver Knight Swordsman. So okay. these guys are getting a little bit bigger. The bane of the assassin. Yeah. And so what? Why? Why is that? They have a dodge value of two. So against ah. the starting assassin gear, which comes with two dodge, they're kind of evil they are very quick yeah they get across the board very quick and they have pushes on their attacks yeah so if they're those guys are on the board don't expect to be standing where you were when you ended an activation <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that yeah so that, that's sort of representing them that they are sort of faster they're not you're gonna it's yeah. not gonna be as easy to dodge away from them so they're actually literally being far more proactive and chasing the yes. heroes yes. so we've already seen I mean, we've looked at four minis. We've seen walk up and hit you. We've yeah. seen dodge away and shoot the highest threat. We've yeah. seen charge in, knock you back, not even attacking, just, 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 just shove you out shoving you for damage. Sure, and then now we're seeing these guys who essentially follow up and will be harder to evade. Yeah. That's, yeah, I really like that, actually. So we'll okay, get those out. And they also have higher armor than the other guys. They have yeah. two armor as opposed to the one of the hollows across right. the board. Okay. So. And these are still basic. Yeah, this is basic. <laughs> this is basic. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, then we've got these Silver Knight Great Bowmen. Oh which my is the bane word! Of many they are players. These scary. are these are huge. The great, yeah, yeah Great Bow is a good word. Oh my, I'm trying to get these guys in here. They are. <laughs> so they good. are physical damage, unlike the magic damage of the the crossbow hollows. Yeah. But their damage does hit the entire node. Yeah. So say there's three player characters standing mm -hmm. on a node, they would all get hit by that. Wow, so AoE essentially yeah, as, yeah. A, as a yeah. base. Big splash effect. So you never, as the aggro, you never want to be ending your activation standing With on the same node as other guys because they will get wow. hit by it also. Yeah. Okay, oh my word. And yeah, at this, again, hard to see a little bit, but the detail here like on the bows is absolutely lovely. There's a real nice ornateness to it. Um, there's actually... Even on the armor, like you can see the kind of different plate and chain, uh, like that's they're gorgeous, they're, yep. they're lovely. Um, okay, so what does that leave us with? The other basic guys. The basic guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These two big boys. These are wow. 
Yeah, these are sentinels, and they will ruin your day. <laughs> so they're kind of the of the oh my word basic grunts. Yeah, they are the kind of the elite. Yeah, they are generally the scariest. They kind of have a combination of a lot of the different mechanics you see spread okay. across the other grunts. They push with their movement. There's no damage on it, but they move in and reposition you. Yeah. And then they make a big six damage attack at the nearest guy, oh but it word. does hit the area. They have ten health and two armor. Ten. So basically, every individual attack you're going to do against them yep. will be at two damage less, basically. Yes. So yes. say wow. you roll five, that would be three damage. Three damage. Okay. Yeah. I'll just we'll bring their card in actually if you yes, have it yeah, there yeah. just to show. So this is obviously going to be in comparison to the hollow soldiers we showed initially. Um, so here we go. Here's a sort of more vicious. Style. So you so can there's see that. their nine threat. So that means they're going early. Yes. Isn't it? Okay. 10 health. Yeah. Then you've got the, the range 1 attack rather yeah. than range 0. Wow, yeah. Um, just still the dodge value of 1 because they're quite slow. Okay. Um, and then that move forward one with the push towards the nearest. So that's, that's that little icon just there that represents the pushing. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then that attack, that big 6 damage attack, and then in the bottom left you can see that means it hits everybody on the node. So you don't want to stack up against these guys. So yeah. just to get me from right, <laughs> you've 10 health as a character. And any stamina you spend essentially makes that lower. Yep. yep. And they hit an entire a selection AOE of, of a node for six. Yes. yes. Yeah. And you still get to roll your defense dice, whatever you yes. have. Oh, yes. And that will yeah. kind of yeah. potentially reduce it. So let's let's have a quick chat about the dice then. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll bring them in. So say these guys are coming in for six. I've got a, a couple of black dice to roll, maybe a blue dice to roll. Yeah. We'll so sort of show. The black has one blank, I believe three ones and two twos. Okay. The blue, I believe it's two ones. Three twos and a three, okay. yeah. and then the orange has one one. I think it's two wow. twos, two threes, and a four. So yeah, that, that so that's whenever we looked earlier on um, at the dragon tooth that had yeah. oranges available because or two oranges even available. Two oranges and a because it's a legendary is, weapon. It's yeah, crazy good. Yeah, but when you look at something like the great uh, the great wooden hammer, you're talking only about a couple of two or three. Black, Black dice. dice. Yeah. Um, so that's so that's sorry. That would maybe be a better way of putting it. So this is your skill. Yep. Yeah. Um, do you know something I love? And it seems a little bit silly because I love custom dice. Like yeah. I am a big fancy flight mm -hmm. guy. Like I love seeing lots of different games, lots of dice, and all that. But this super simple. This is for your attacking and your defending. Yep. Um, and it's just swords, essentially just representing how much you can absorb or how much you can do. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Love how straightforward that is. That's yeah. really nifty. Uh, and now I want. A dragon tooth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think everyone does. They're pretty great. Yeah. yeah. So what have you got next for me there? Uh, well, that's that's all the basic Six. troops. Uh, we are, can move on to the mini bosses. Oh, now. oh my goodness. We've got either that or we've got encounters. We're now oh going yeah. Before, super shall, quick chat about we, encounters. Shall we tease them a little yeah. bit more? Tease. This is Alex's decision this time, guys. <laughs> so do you want to even lift out one of the tiles yes, and we can show certainly. exactly what would happen when you see one of these encounter cards. So as you enter each tile, a randomly chosen um, tier, is it tier one, two, or three? Tier one, two, or three, depending yeah. on the mini boss or boss that you've chosen. Yeah. Their stat card that comes with them yeah. will indicate how many of each type of uh, each tier is available to fight. Yeah, and this is going to show you essentially, well, this is a ghostly keep in this instance, yeah. but it's going to show you then what m monsters are basically going to spawn on the tile. Yeah. And we'll have a look at the tile so in just a second to kind of... the tile. Lovely. I'll just pull it back a second and then we can pop it on here and show you guys. So this is a sample tile. Mm -hmm. um, actually love... So you've got nice kind of... We've well got one, two, three entries ways here and you'll, yep. you'll link these together to yep. form one big board as you sort yes, of move around. Board, okay. yeah. um, and these symbols then, these are what we were referring to earlier as the nodes. Just, so yeah. they are all nodes and then you've got the different classifications of nodes. So okay. The, the yellow ones are your basic nodes. Gotcha. Then you've got the red ones, which are your enemy spawn nodes. Right. And okay. then you've got your purple ones, which are the terrain spawn nodes. Okay, and that could be positive or negative. So that could be chests or barrels, but it could also be negative stuff? Um, so there's no negative stuff that comes on the terrain nodes okay. yet. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah. Stay off terrain nodes. Yeah. Um, but you do have the basic nodes can potentially have traps on them. So okay. on the encounter cards, it's different information that comes ah. on the encounter cards. So yeah, we'll come back to this. And so we were initially looking at the ghostly keep. So that's yeah. quite a basic yeah. level one encounter. Um, you've got the two hollow soldiers that mm -hmm. would spawn on the node where we saw the, yeah. the one red sword. 
and then you've got a crossbow hollow that would spawn on the one with the two. Yep. You'd have a barrel that would spawn on the one with the, the sun on it. Cool. And then you would have a chest spawn on the other in terms of the terrain rules. Barrels can be smashed by dodging through them. Okay, awesome. Obviously. My favorite yeah. thing to do. <laughs> um, chests give you, currently give you extra loot. Oh. With expansions can be mimics. Yeah. Obviously. Oh, <laughs> no. Because that's oh. fair, right? Oh, look at you. You're so excited about your chest. Hopefully it doesn't eat you. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's vicious. That's I mean, I, I, the game already comes out of the gate saying we're rough on you, and I was thinking, oh great, but there's lots of loot to gain, and now you're telling me in expansions you might not get any. Yeah, yeah, it might kill you instead. But <laughs> if you kill the mimic, you get double the reward that a chest would give oh, you. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So sometimes it depends on like if you're not very well geared and you yeah. come across a chest, you might be sitting there praying for just a regular chest okay. for a bit of a bump. Yeah. yeah. But if you're quite well geared, you might be like, well, we really want a mimic here because okay. we think we can take it yeah. and we get double the reward. Wow. Yeah. That, yeah, that's pretty cool, actually. I like that a lot. So you've got that, that um, weighing up of sort of different mentalities you could be in dependent <laughs> on where your character is at the time. Oh, that's really awesome. I, I don't know if I'm excited or scared of the Mimic now. <laughs> Initially, I was scared. Now I'm like, no, but more loot. Oh, and I'm, I'm definitely excited for the loot. Treasure. Yeah. So I'll bring in the next card. So this is the Forgotten. This is just another encounter card, but I think there's a key difference. So that one's one. just a level, another level one yeah. encounter card. But at the bottom, you'll see the two spears coming yeah, in. Just there. That means there are traps. OK. So the other type of node, which is kind of a, a sub node that we haven't covered yet. Yeah. These are entry nodes. Okay, so let me so bring that, get back, that in back in. Here. So entry nodes are any nodes that are adjacent to a doorway. Okay, so basically as you come in. So that'd be those three there, and then you've got the others going across. Yeah. So on one side, you've got three entry nodes. Yeah. On one side, you've got three entry nodes, and then on the other, you've only got two because gotcha. there is an enemy spawn ah, up in yeah. the top corner, which gotcha. means you can't stand there. And entry nodes are just where you can stand when you enter a room. And so drawing one of those cards then that has the two sort of gold spears, that's going to be your showing you that these nodes then are going to potentially have traps on them. Yeah. Um, and there's a chance they, they could be blank and safe, but they could be... They could be, so they could be damage. damage. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, let's go ahead and have a chat then about the big guys. I think this guy is absolutely oh, my favourite. So that's so. the gargoyle. That is the easiest mini boss. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I picked that instinctively, yeah. or did I just have a feeling? Just a friendly chap. Just a friendly chap. Yeah. So the gargoyle, I mean, he's wielding a huge axe in his right hand, shield in his left, and he also has a tail. So he's got a nice little halberd in his hand. He's got a nice little tail axe nice and a little. shield. <laughs> nice little. <laughs> oh, my word. So I'll have a quick look at his stat card just to see, and you can talk us through yeah. how one of these stat cards works. So in work. terms of the stat card, obviously they're threat 10. Yeah. They're bosses. Um, the four there on the left hand side shows how many cards go in his behavior deck. Okay. So whereas the basic enemies just have their one behavior on their card that sure. they do every time, a boss operates off an entire deck. Okay, wow. And you would take four cards. He has an armor one and a resist, uh, sorry, armor two okay. and a resist of yeah. one. And then he heats up on 12. And heat up means when he hits 12 health, okay. we change some stuff with his behavior deck. Okay. So yeah. how the bosses function. You will have your four cards that it tells mm -hmm. you to have there, and you will cycle those through. When he's had four activations, you'll have seen all the cards he has. Okay. They don't shuffle for his fifth activation. They just turn over so that you memorize the pattern. You've got yeah. the cycle there already. So okay. you know when you're safe, when you're not. You know when to come in and you, when you can overcommit with yeah. your stamina usage. Yeah. But once he hits 12 health, he heats up. Okay. You add another card in, and those cards are generally scarier than the basic <laughs> cards, and then you will shuffle. So then right. that changes that order, and you need to relearn. So halfway that. through the fight, you're going to have to start over, basically. Yes. Yep. Oh my yep. goodness, that's vicious. So he does also have a special rule that okay. means after he's heated up, um, any attacks that are at like a range zero that yeah. are made on his node will cost an additional stamina. Because he's flying now, you have to reach up and hit him, so the right. attacks cost more. Um, and then the last piece of information you've got on there oh, um, yeah. refers back to the encounter cards. Okay. So in the bottom left-hand corner, mm -hmm. you can see a three on an icon, a yeah. one on an icon, and a zero. Okay. That would mean for the exploration up to him, you mm -hmm. would use three level one encounters, okay. one level two encounter, and no level three encounters. Right. So whenever you said he was one of the easier ones, it's because he's focused primarily His on encounters the level one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so that means we're going to have... A starting tile, four tiles, four rooms to four work rooms through, to fight through before yeah. we even then get to his room. And then you yeah. have his mini boss. So room. that's so you guys can sort of really get a feel. So that is going to be 
these tiles, you're going to have yep. four of those, yep. then the boss tile. So yep. in the box, you get one bonfire tile, six wow. exploration tiles, and two boss tiles. And they're all double-sided. Wow. On one side, they look like Lothric. So that's the Lothric. Ah. And then they are the Anor Londo themed tiles, which Epic. leans into the two main bosses in there, which is the Dancer of the Boreal Valley. Well, let's go ahead and get, the, we'll get these in. So which one is that? This one? That's the yes, Dancer. Yeah. yeah, color me surprised, because she, or he, or it, looks <laughs> vicious. So yeah. she's the, the main boss, um, oh, which is focused around the Lothric-themed tile side. Yeah. So she's a main boss. She's not a mini boss. She's terrifying. Yeah. She's, uh, in terms of the armor and defensive stats yeah. you might expect from a, a main boss, she's actually lower than you might expect, but she does a lot of damage. Okay. So hers is very much a, like, rush down, hope for the best. And she's yeah. very unpredictable. Just get in, get out. There's no if you hang around too long, it's just not going to end well so, for you. Yeah. <laughs> her special rule is that keeps her nice and unpredictable. Every time you would resolve her heat up card, you yeah. have to shuffle the deck again. So once so you, she's heated wow. up, you can her never. decks you, you very rarely just changing ever get. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's sort of representing her dancer agile kind of unpredictable movement. Yeah, yeah. that's all. Oh, that's epic. So we'll quickly go through the last couple yeah. just so we get them all because I really want to show all the plastic, all the all oh, the yeah, models yeah. you get in the box. So. Let's see, who is, well, who's, the, who's the other main boss then? The other, so you've got the guy with the big hammer <laughs> and his best friend, Ornstein. They come as a pair, you oh, fight them at the same time. Wow. They both activate at the same time. And his hammer is bigger than most of the characters. Yes. yes. Yeah. All of the characters. Yeah. His nice little hammer, <laughs> just for knocking in tent pegs. Yep. Um, okay. And heads. And who have we got then? I'll show a final. Let's choose one final mini boss to show, and then we'll wrap this up. I think this Go guy. The Titanite Titan Demon. Titan Demon. Titan Demon. Titan Demon. He's a mini favorite. boss. He's a mini boss? He's a mini boss. He is huge. The title mini boss isn't necessarily attached to the size of the models. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, he has no face. He has. No. No, no, no. It's just a Titanite construct. Wow, that's absolutely epic. So I guess really. You guys can see this box comes with a ton of stuff. We haven't even yeah. shown a tenth of the loot cards yeah. or, or all the different kind of variable options you have in terms yeah. of the modifiers and loot. But what we are going to do is start looking to get some games of this and yeah. uh, hopefully we'll explore more of the world then. Cool. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So look, thank you so much, guys. If you enjoyed it, please fire a comment below. And uh, thank you again from Alex and Jamie for joining me. We will see you in the next video. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.